down to was home, love, and the absence of it. And so tonight as we go through the show, I will pick this up from time to time. And every time I pick it up, I don't just represent the soldier who's holding it, but I represent all the soldiers and all the people from that period of time till now made great sacrifices so you and Freedom. Hold on a second. I think we'll get a little loud tonight. Freedom. 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 Let it ring. And that's exactly what it was doing. <laughs> it was reading. Okay, that sounds better. Freedom. What will any man or woman do to be free? When all is said and done, how will each soul measure the value, the cost of freedom's dream fulfilled? The fall of Fort Sumter in 1860 wasn't about freeing the slaves, although it couldn't be denied that the institution of slavery was splitting our nation apart. It was about two separate ways of life, two very different visions of what it meant to be a free nation. The writers of our Constitution were aware of this division, and trusting in the lofty principles of human rights, they believed that they could guide their newborn nation to a common reality of freedom. In the end, it was too much to ask of a country still in its infancy, and the division widened. Compromise failed to bridge the gap. War was inevitable and all believed it would be a short one. A Southern statesman boldly claimed that all the blood that would be shed was put into it for me. This short war lasted for five years. 655,000 men died for the cause. More men than all of America's wars combined up to the end of Vietnam. Incredible number. The Union was preserved, and the Southern way of life faded into history. Three million men fought in the war, and their average age was 25. What we remember tonight is that every one of them was a son, or a father, brother, husband, and for each of them, the price of freedom, whether they lived or died, it was paid in full, and each of them had a very different vision of what freedom meant to them. For many of them, freedom meant love, or the lack of it. What we believe is how we define ourselves, but what we know, what we know is who we truly are. It is there in that knowing that freedom lives. Only then, in that knowing, can we define a just cause. These sentiments were expressed in the songs the soldiers listened to, sang together. Music said for them what they felt in their hearts. So much so that songs like Home Sweet Home were actually banned in many camps on both sides. The reminder of home was the cause of melancholy, Desertion, discontent, lack of morale. So they kept these things away from these guys. So these songs for many of them were banned in the camps. But they sang in many. Music is the language of what is divine, reaching deeper than our perception of what we believe to be right or wrong. Robert E. Lee once said, I don't see how we could have any army without music.
America should be free ground, all of it. Not divided by a line between slave state and free, but every bit of it from here to the Pacific Ocean. No man has to bow. No man born of royalty. Here, we judge you by what you do, not by who your father was. Here, here you can be something. Here is the place to build a home. It's not the land. No, there's always more land. It's the idea that we all have value. So what we're fighting for in the end is we're fighting for each other. And what so many of us discovered in the end, that all of us can fight for freedom, but it's not on the battlefields. It's right here in our own hearts. I won't be gone long. So we'll all be over in a few weeks. Nobody really wants to do much fighting. No more tears. I promise you, I'll come back and I'll never, ever leave you again. I promise you. Turn to you. No more tears. Can you play something for me? Something beautiful. You, you know, the one I the one I love.
Antietam, September 21st, 1862. 
In the beginning, there were so many of us. We rallied around our great flag. Now many are gone. They're just faces. The period. It's floating then. And fading is eternity. I have a hard time remembering the names. The great flag that we rallied around at times has become a shroud of death. Left to me. Carry their cause. My cause. And I cannot fail them. Now is this war just goes on and on. But those of us who remain, well, we become brothers. Brothers. Fighting under a flag of freedom. We will rally proud the flag boys, rally once again. Shouting the battle cry of freedom And we'll rally from the hillside Gather from the plains Shouting the battle cry of freedom A union forever For our boys hurrah Down with the traitor And up with the star And we'll rally round the black boys Rally once again Shouting the battle cry of freedom Springing to the call of our brothers gone before, shouting the battle cry of freedom. And although he may be poor, not a man shall be a slave, shouting the battle cry of freedom. A union forever, a wild voice hurrah, down with the traitor and up with the star. And we'll rally round the black boys. Rally once again, shouting the battle cry of freedom. We will welcome to our numbers the loyal, true, and brave, shouting the battle cry of freedom. And of all in a poor, not a man shall be a slave. Shouting the battle cry of freedom, the union forever, hurrah, boys, hurrah! Down with the traitor and up with the star, and we'll rally round the bright boys, rally once again, shouting the battle cry of freedom.
Antietam, 21st of September, 1862. It all happened so quickly, I can no longer remember why. I'm sure there was some great cause, sense of honor and duty that moved me deeply enough to leave everything, everything that I was behind. Cause, honor, duty. Now to me, they are just words. The meaning of them has changed. Well, it's become lost, lost in all this madness. So much has become lost or, or just mercifully forgotten. Does it really matter anymore? I've become a soldier. Am I? Am I a better man? Or am I a man at all? I pray that I pray that Almighty God may someday give me peace. But I can no longer find it in myself.